Hot Pumpkins. It's time for episode 334 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering or are interested in playing that's Magic right. the Gathering at any level of competitiveness, whether you are just starting out barely on your journey or you have reached the end of the Candyland Trail and are at that creepy gingerbread house. Which Either is one. the equi- equivalent of winning the world championship. Yes, in, in this exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should check on Javier you Dominguez. To, you get to go to the Candy Castle, <laughs> depending on which which version of Candyland you're playing. Oh, yeah. We played Candyland, our board game review channel. Yeah, we did. A couple months ago. Yeah, it didn't have the spooky swamp. No, we both remembered a spooky chocolate swamp. Yes, I looked it up. That is in a later version. Oh, Okay, so we played okay. the classic, but yes. if you don't remember it, you find yourself like, where's Spooky Chuck Swamp? You're just playing yeah, the old version. Exactly, which has like a less exciting goal, which is just a gingerbread house Who that cares? looks like you're going to get Hanseled and Gretled. Who cares? Have you ever eaten a gingerbread house? Because I haven't. Yeah, me neither. It is dry. It is also, crunchy. Also, it's like specifically made of gingerbread that's not for eating. It's like more structurally sound gingerbread and icing that are meant to be just like rock hard mm. and not tasty kids don't be tempted yeah don't be tempted get a good candy snack yeah anyways anyways uh well, i'm one of your hosts maria i'm another one of your hosts megan and on today's show we've got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about because a lot of exciting stuff is happening yeah this weekend is mythic championship three happening in las vegas which is basically wow. the arena pro tour if yes. you want the old parlance and it's going to be an enormous tournament seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars is in the prize pool Ooh. here although not enormous in terms of number of people no, competing not at all fewer than a hundred that is that is wild yeah a very small pool of players a very big pool of prizes yes so like you could see in vegas a very small pool within a much larger pool on the top floor of a hotel <laughs> that sounds like something vegas has. Yeah, I mean, if they don't... Uh, one small pool inside of, like, a bigger pool? Yes. Absolutely. And you can only That's go into the small pool if you're extra special. Yeah. Otherwise, you just stay in the it's big pool. It's like a pool. VIP pool. It's a VIP pool within yeah. a non-VIP pool. There's got to, There's more than one of those. Part of being a VIP is letting everybody else know you're a VIP and that those people specifically aren't VIPs, right? This whole system, I'm not thrilled about. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's coming up this weekend, as is Grand Prix Seattle. Just remember, Seattle. systems of hierarchy like that are meant to separate you from the people who are like you instead of uniting you. Megan Fax. Yeah. Subscribe. Like yeah. and subscribe to Megan Fax. <laughs> Anyways, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about um, Mythic Championship uh, 3, Grand Prix Seattle's coming up this weekend. Very exciting. Uh, we're going to talk about Core Set 20, yes. which is coming out. Wow. S- spookily soon. Spookily soon. The pre-release is going to be on the 5th. With Yeah, that's a Friday. They're going to do a Friday pre-release for the first time for this release date on the 12th. But yeah, we're going to talk about preview cards from that. A whole ton yeah. of preview cards are coming out. And Mark Some Rosewater's their, like, article. Some thinking behind it. Yeah. yeah. Plus, is Modern broken? <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Yeah, we're going to get into that a little bit because who boy, or should I say, who gack boy <laughs> who gack there's a certain <laughs> card which will remain nameless that's really shaking up the format we've only said it six times what so could far it be? this episode but before we do any of that huge enormous thank you to everybody who's a supporter of our show on patreon.com slash glhf magic that's right if you are supporting the show thank you so much you are literally helping keep this on the air or being broadcast out of cat's mouths everywhere yeah. That's how it sounds when your cat meows, but when it opens it up for this podcast, this is what, this it, is sounds what it sounds like. like. We love pictures, by the way, of your cats yes. broadcasting our show, so don't stop with those. Yeah, absolutely. Those are really good. But um, yeah, but thank you so so much. Whether you are pledging as little as five bucks a month, dollar twenty five a week, yeah, um, or anywhere up from that, it means so much to us, and it. We love having you as part of our patron family. Yeah, it's just going to give you a great feeling every month as well with supporting creators you love. And just as a little show of support, we support people on Patreon too. Yeah, of course we do. So, you know, like this is something we do. We're not just telling you to do it. We both do it. Exactly. I'm a member of NPR. You know, yeah, which is totally. larger in scope than I mean, podcasting. They, but they're still. not on Patreon, but like no, same concept. Exactly. <laughs> same idea. We support limited resources on Patreon. Yeah. We support Scryfall on Patreon yeah. and some other creators as well. So just, just, you know, consider that. We're not just like sitting out here telling you to do it. We are walking Absolutely. the walk, talking the talk over here. Absolutely. Thank you as well to our 
sponsor Card Kingdom, cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Currently, you can get a GLHF token if you say good luck, have token with your order. Just a great place if you're shopping for singles. Maybe you've seen some new modern decks. Ahem, ahem. And you're like, I need <laughs> oh to get boy. my hands on some of these modern cards. Yeah. They will ship them to you like that. And you if you want to playing them in just a handful of days. I from know now. it's so their shipping is so fast. If yeah. you if you want to get the ball rolling on M20 as well, yep. think about that. Getting a, a box pre-ordered or something to draft with your friends. I know that's a super fun thing to do. We do it all the time. And M20 is a great set for players to learn magic with. So yep. if you've been wanting to get somebody into the game, think about using Card Kingdom for that. They also have beginner decks that are fabulous to teach new people with and like megan said ask for a token ask for a sticker and use our affiliate link cardgame.com slash glhf to do all of these things so that you know that they that, that that you love us and they love us and it's a giant love circle on hbo which is what month. i call a donut <laughs> <laughs> you go for the donut joke i go well, for, for the, the late HBO night joke. table joke yeah i feel like that really encapsulates our personalities yeah yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, Mythic Championship 3 coming up in a mere matter of days in Sin City, oh, Las Vegas, Nevada. So, so little time. I know. This is, I'm just like shocked that it's happening so soon, but it is. I'm hopping on an airplane tomorrow. Yeah. Going down there. Whoa, 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 I'm not whoa, playing whoa, whoa. it, everybody. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure you were worried. You're like, oh my God, hopefully not. Mar- I'm so not worried for Maria. This. She is going to fall flat on her face. No, um, I'm going to be doing some commentary at the event um, at the news desk yep. with Day 9, so I'm super excited about that. So come on over and hop in chat and say hi. That'd be really cool. And over at the MTG Esports website, yeah. you can see some predictions from some of the coverage team, including you. Oh, they have them up. Yeah, oh, okay. it already happened. Okay. I now know who you think is going to win this. <laughs> and I think... <laughs> Did look, they pick the right person? Take, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how could I not pick this person? Should we talk well, about yes, it? Maria, okay. you have chosen... None other than Simon Gertzen to take down the whole tournament. Yeah, love it. I love it. Simon's, of course, our uh, former coverage buddy, and yeah. he quit coverage, and now he just like, immediately around. qualifies. Qualified via that MCQ. <laughs> I love Got it, it done. so much. So I think it'd be so cool if Simon yep. took this thing down. Looking at your top four, it's a classic Maria top four. Yes, it by is. By which I mean it has Reed Duke in it. <laughs> Maria, never not picking Reed Duke. I, I, I'm always on Reed Duke's side. And I told him this weekend, actually, because I saw him at coverage of Grand Prix uh, DC that we were doing for Modern Horizons Limited. And I was like, Reed, by the way, I put you in my top four picks for this tournament. So you better not let me down. Like, I was just <laughs> like kind of kidding with him. And he was like, oh, that's a real honor, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> And I was like, see, is there no better representation of Reed Duke than his reaction to that comment? So, yeah. Yeah. So I always pick him. And one of these days, it's going to be his day. So Um, I love. So your underdog to watch is Nefam, who uh, was in the top eight of a limited tournament. Yeah. uh, GP. Milwaukee, yeah, Madison. Which one was it? It was whichever Wisconsin city that happened in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Wisconsin. (laughs) Which is the only time in my life I'm going to say that phrase. Yeah, great point. Uh, great but point. But anyways, I like that. Um, Marshall Sutcliffe's underdog to watch, Kai Buddha. Okay, Marshall. <laughs> low blow. Low blow. That's yeah, pretty I mean, funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like, he hasn't, he doesn't play as much magic anymore. No, so he doesn't. I don't know. I mean, he kind of is in a way. <laughs> yeah. It's just bizarre to say. Uh, I like these picks, actually. I love these underdog picks. Um, Cedric Phillips chose Noah Walker. Oh, I love Noah. Do you know his really perennial nice. favorite of mine as well? Yes. Um, yeah, and then Alias V chose Emma Handy. Yeah, that's awesome. a strong pick there. Yeah, strong that's a real, pick. real strong pick. Paul Chion picking Amaz as his underdog to watch, which I think is also a very strong yeah. pick. Amaz was actually at DC this past weekend, and he very nearly made top eight. So, like, Hot dang. very good at magic. Yeah. And then uh, Dex to watch. Yes. Okay, so uh, we don't know. We, I don't. Th- I'm gonna go. I, I'm not sure if they've published all of the deck lists for the players yet. Okay. But uh, these decks that we picked here as decks to watch are in fact being played in the tournament. Yeah. We do know the decks. Um. And uh, Paul Chian picks Simic Nexus. Uh huh. So are you a fan, Megan? I'm a big fan. All right. Big fan. I picked Sultai Dreadhorde. Of course you did. Because I You're love. You're a Dreadhorde. big fan of that. I love that deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cool. Don't know how good it is, but it's super sweet. Yeah. Marshall chose Esper Hero, which yeah. is the 
Jasper mid-range deck with Hero of Precinct 1 to make yeah. a bunch of tokens, which I think is super interesting. I feel like depending on the week, that deck has been very hot or cold. Yeah, it's so like true. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, look, it made the top eight. It looks like it's just like a, a powerhouse. And then sometimes you're just like, well, that looked bad. Yeah, exactly. 100%. That's yes. exactly what happens with this deck. I've certainly watched games where I, like, I watch the deck and I'm like, that deck looked bad. <laughs> That deck did nothing. Yep, exactly. Oh, it played some bad creatures that got killed. Well, that's the thing. Okay, it's it's creatures sometimes are not, just not impactful enough based yes. on the other things that people are doing. Like I'm playing Command the Dread Horde over yes. here. Yes, like their creatures have to get their thing done. Yeah, they have to be around long enough. Like Hero of Precinct One, it's only a two-two unless you start casting a bunch of multicolored spells and play it early. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, exactly. Thief of Sanity. Gosh, that thing's like a magnet for removal. <laughs> Shoot it. Like, of how many times, out of how many times that a Thief of Sanity gets played, do you think that it connects with the player? You know what? I don't know. Because I think it's like one in ten. I immediately kill it. Exactly. <laughs> immediately. I think that is literally something like one in ten. Yeah. Cedric Phillips hot take here. Boros aggro. Yeah. <laughs> that's his choice. That's very Cedric. It is 100% a hundred percent a Cedric aggro pick. player. Yeah. Um, I have yet to, s I mean, we saw a couple of weeks ago, right? There yeah. are, so there have been a couple of Boros aggro decks that have been trying to <laughs> crest the wave, <laughs> uh, ride, ride that Come wave on. into <laughs> the shore of standard winds. Anyways, that metaphor <laughs> got away. <from> <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ailey's V picking Sultai Dreadhorde as well. So big thumbs nice. up. Yeah, I concur. Um, and then uh, Paul Chian has command the Dreadhorde as the card to watch. OK, even though he didn't pick it as a deck. All right, Paul, I see what you're doing. Yeah. You can't have it both ways. Maria, All right. I feel like I don't look. You picked a fairy time raveler. <laughs> Come on. Get out of here. I everyone did. knows. I did. Little T is not a card to watch. <laughs> Little T is a card that's Everyone already knows here. where he is. You don't need to watch it. I feel like I just <laughs> need to point him out, though, because yeah. um, I didn't pick Esper Hero. But if I hadn't picked Salty Dreadheart, I think I would have. Yeah. And uh, Teferi, this is my nod to that Teferi. I mean, it's just like probably the most. Can I say this? It's the what? most impactful card in standard recently. Eesh. Uh Yeah. I mean, it might be. It's in a lot of decks. It's just in every deck. It's in a lot. Okay. Um, Marshall chose Narset. Great pick. I love Narset. Yeah, this is an excellent choice. Um, I do think that this is also one where it's like the ship has sailed. That card is already hot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. is hot, hot, hot. <laughs> that card is great. It does everything it's you want to so do. so good. Uh, every time that a person tries to draw more than one card and like she pulls, <laughs> you know, you're playing arena and she like does a little red pulse thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, uh, there's nothing better than this feeling of Narset being like, you can't. You can't. You just can't. You can't. Sorry. Oh, and then we have Finale of Glory and Finale of Promise. Ooh, so two finales yeah. here. Finale cool. of Promise is a card is a card I love. Um, we yeah. played it in our uh, Drake's decks. Yes. And it's just busted. It's the red one. That the lets red you um, cast cards from your graveyard. Yeah. And then Finale of Glory, hot take. That's that is the white one. That is a very hot take. Yeah, that makes knights. I think this is going along with his Boros Agro pick yep. here. Cedric is like down the line. Also, his pick for winner was Andrew Ellenbogen. I, I love, love that. I love that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we're big fans of Andrew. We are obviously. huge fans. I actually roomed with him in this past uh, <laughs> tournament in DC and Nifam, of yeah. course. And uh, it was pretty cool. They're, they're super cute just drafting all the time. And I'm just like, you guys are adorable. Um, yeah. Anyway. So yeah, this looks, this looks good. I don't know, Megan. I'm going to put you on the spot here now for you to Ooh. pick a winner. Okay. I don't even know. Playing. Okay, we'll we'll look up everybody who's playing, or okay. just like th think about it. Okay, think about it really hard because I'm, I'm thinking about it really hard. <laughs> There's 32 MPL players are going to be playing. Yes, 36 challengers are yeah. entering the arena yeah. as non MPL members playing against them. Okay, Simon being one of them. Am I the only person? No, no, no. Oh my gosh! Only Alias picked somebody who's in the MPL to win the whole thing. She picked Brad Nelson, which is a smart choice because yeah. he's auto top sixteen. Because uh, each of the division winners in the MPL immediately goes to day two. Okay, top my pick 16. is Ken Yukihiro. Ken Yukihiro, yeah. yeah. See, very smart pick there too. Already in the top sixteen. Yep, it's true. But also, I think that Ken's a great player. Yes. Um, I he was in my MPL division. What are you talking about? He was no, in he my wasn't. division. He was in your division. <laughs> How my dare bad. you still care for me? Just, 
I'm sorry. It's because I watched him in your division. He was great. He was my favorite player to watch. Like, exactly. I feel like I was like, I loved watching his game so much yeah. that in my head, I was like, he was in my you division. Stole you literally stole Ken from me. How rude. I'm sorry. Well, the point is, he's great. Yeah. I like, I love watching him play. He plays interesting decks. He it's does. Great. That's what I love seeing. Like that new innovation week to week, very nearly from Ken. Yeah. He only brought mono red the last two weeks, which is essentially one week because he couldn't change decks yeah. in between those two weeks. So yeah, I'm on board with that pick. Yeah. So super exciting stuff coming up in Vegas. Uh, I picked for my top four, Simon, Brad, Ken. So I have Ken there and Rita, yeah. as we mentioned. Um, do you have any other predictions that people are going to do well? Ooh, um, I think that, I think that Emma Handy is going to do well. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, she's just like a, a stellar player. Um, and hmm. super excited for this tournament too, yeah. which I do think it goes factors a long into way. It. Oh, a hundred percent. Uh, for sure. Like I said, I'm always a fan of Noah Walker. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited to see him play in this tournament. Yeah. Uh, so those are my those are my other those are my underdog picks. Well, if you think you know who is going to take this thing down, and in fact think you can properly name the top ten players in this event, wow! Do we have a contest for you? Yeah, we do. So we've got a contest through Thousand Leagues. So thank you to Thousand Leagues for always running these contests. They're super great. Uh, you can go in and draft your ten players that you think are going to do the best in the tournament, and we're going to pick. Uh, well, we're not going to pick the winner. They themselves will sort out the winners and the losers of this tournament and then whoever scores the most points in our draft will win a fabulous prize courtesy of us card kingdom ultra pro and all you have to do is go and click on the link in the show notes or below this video to enter but make sure you do it before friday this week because uh friday morning's too late too late everything will have started so uh yeah congratulations to the people who have won this contest from us last time it's super fun and uh yeah try your hand at it this time yeah oh we have here a little metagame breakdown oh, excellent okay so uh there are 17 players on esper control that is an enormous wow. number that is a huge number of players and this is interesting too because these deck lists by the way had to be submitted a couple of weeks ago i think uh-huh and esper control was just cresting as becoming a popular deck after being a complete nobody yeah. for, for a few weeks. For a week, few weeks there, it was pretty yeah. bad. It was, it was actively 25% bad. That's 25% of the field. Interesting. There are 12 MPL players and five challengers on it. Okay. so Super interesting. I I really need to see where this goes because yeah. it was terrible, was just becoming good. Will it stay good in this field? Uh, then we have Esper Hero at nine. Okay, that um, makes sense. Which is six MPL players and three challengers. Is it Phoenix with nine as well? But that's two MPL and seven challengers. I mean, is it Phoenix is definitely more of a challenger style deck. I would yeah. say right now, at least in the current metagame, but it, it's also a super fun deck and can get yeah. you dead out of nowhere. It is. It's pretty cool. I've enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Bat Ramp. All right. Here you go, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, eight players, four and four, <laughs> which this is interesting because this like this did well at a couple of tournaments. Yeah. But hasn't also been doing great since then. Right. So part of me wonders, it's like, oh, did this deck like have its day? And then it was and just now, like, bye bye. Exactly. And these people had to submit it. But, and now here they're like, oh, no. <laughs> preserved in amber. Exactly. And it's a little time capsule. <laughs> <laughs> uh then there's six people on white aggro uh five on mono red aggro okay get so out of here not a lot yeah not um lot. three gruel mid-range three simic nexus two sultai dread horde come on two grixis bolus yeah and this is a deck that's kind of been climbing up yeah. recently too do you know, i have to say every time i play against it i'm like this deck is cool it i is like cool. it it plays both nickel bolus the ravager which is him in his little dragon form <laughs> Who flips flips into a, a big planeswalker? Oh, you yeah. look just like you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then also him as a you know dragon god or whatever, just hanging out, being real real cool, being super cool. Yeah, the deck's um, powerful. A Jund Warriors. Yeah, so this Ooh. this is what I'm interested. Spicy. It's pretty much Gruel mid range, right? Except yeah, wait, it's Jund Warriors. That's oh, what I said. Hold on. Gr uh Oh, I just have to double check. I was um, assuming it was Gruel Warriors. No, which I, I have that was played. you um, wiping off your glasses. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Um, a Celestia tokens and a okay. Simic ramp um, and a Bant mid range. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm super excited. Bant mid range. Only one player when if you had yeah. wound back time a few weeks ago would have been Ooh. like everybody playing it. Yeah, with that Oketra. Oh, God Eternal yeah, Ketra? Yeah. That card is hot. Well, that seems like a pretty good spread. I am I am 
really surprised by the number of control decks. Yeah. Uh, spe- specifically Esper Control being the only flavor as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a, a nice diverse uh, set of decks. So hopefully it remains that way throughout the tournament. We don't see like Esper Control just crushing everybody and uh, taking things over. Yeah. Well, there you All go. Right. Coming up this Friday, if you want to watch it, Friday, Saturday, Sunday on twitch.tv slash magic. It's going to start at 8 in the morning Pacific time. So bright and early, get your butt up out of bed and get in a chat and hang out for the Mythic Championship. And remember to play in our, uh, what do I want to call it? Oh, yeah, that's the word, draft. Play in our player fantasy draft. <laughs> <laughs> What's that word? What's that word that we, we never t- use we, it in magic? That we never, ever talk we about magic. We never use in magic. <laughs> Corset 2020 All right. already happening. Let's get to know our corset friends a little bit Ooh. better. So Mark Rosewater wrote a whole article, core to the point. I love it. <laughs> um, on Daily MTG that you can go and check out where he talks about kind of their their thoughts as they were working through the design of Corset 2020 and also what we can expect kind of. And the fact that this is our first Corset back after yeah. taking a break from Corsets for a while, well, right? No, 2019 happened. 2019 happened? Yeah. What year is it? <laughs> I mean, it, it is 2019, but last year was Corset 2019. But that was the first one back after a while. Okay, so this yeah. is the second one back. Exactly. So this is the one where they're okay. taking some of the data f- that they looked at from 2019 and being like, okay, as we're moving forward, yeah. what are we doing with this? All right, so what, what does Mark have to say about making M20? Um, well, obviously, they talk a lot about how the corset is about accessibility. Right. Um, and this is something that they feel that corset 2019 did well, is that... It's great for new players. Yeah. It feels very accessible. Um, It's interesting, but it's not super complicated. So that, you know. And what a fine tight walk to walk as well. Like, okay, I've got to make sure. A tight walk to walk is what you just said. A tight rope to walk. Yeah. Um, What a tight walk to walk. (laughs) (laughs) You have to walk so tight. Walk tight. (laughs) Tight rope to walk because, yeah, to make something simple and accessible but still be interesting is actually a pretty big challenge. Yeah. So uh, by taking this on, uh, you know, kudos to them. Um, yeah. Did he have any thoughts about um, it? Well, he says that it it's lower complexity and higher resonance. Um, so lower complexity means being careful about with how many mechanics players are sure. interacting with. Um, and then the, the second part is about making cards recognizable and like approachable. So something that feels inviting <laughs> and cool. <laughs> Approachable. You know, a card that looks like you could walk up to it at a party and it would be there for you. Oh, and you you wouldn't be too frightened of it? No, exactly. So we're not talking about like a card like pulling teeth here in this Mm, situation. No. So, you know, less spooky cards in the realm of cards. Um, So they also talk about no, uh, there's not any non evergreen keywords. Okay. So we won't see new mechanics. Um, It has like a little bit of flavor. Which is just that, you know, I don't even remember what the, I like, I don't even remember what the flavor of 2019 was. I don't actually either. I think it had to do with Nikki B. Yeah. yeah it kind of talks yeah, about did, Nicol Bolas. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah. oranges was full of flavor. So I remember yeah, that. Exactly. Um, and then five monocolored planeswalkers. Okay. Yeah. So one sense. for each, one for each slice of the pie. So yeah, if you have a friend or somebody who wants to get involved in magic and hasn't been for a while, this is a great entry point for them. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. And so then they talked about how draft was kind of an area that they looked at and wanted to improve. With corsets specifically? Yes. Okay. With the corset uh, 2020, like looking back at 2019, um, there were the 10 two color draft archetypes, but they felt like some of them were too insular and you couldn't like combine them with other color pairs very Ooh, well. Great point. Yeah. So like things should be able to overlap a little bit better. I love that they're thinking about this. And this is yeah. something that I know players have been asking for for a long time. And it just makes drafts so much more dynamic. But I don't think it takes anything away from it as far as like I don't think it's too complex to have cards that kind of yeah. can straddle that line and draft or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so for this one, they're talking about looking at like the wedge, which means like any three colors together on the color pie okay. um, and focusing on the ally pair in that, like having the stronger theme. But, you know, there's still themes in them um so there's flying which is blue red white uh elementals which is green blue red go wide which is white black green 
aggro, which is red, white, black, and control and ETB effects, which is black, green, and blue. Oh, that's awesome. I love that's yeah. how they broke how they've broken it out and decide to attack it here with M20. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, and then they talk about uh how they're you know, they're going wild with the Chandra situation. Yes, they are. They were like, Do you know what? <laughs> War of the Spark has uncommon and rare planeswalkers. And we're continuing like, it. We're just gonna roll with that because this is telling like this one is telling the story of Chandra. I love that. How can we make Chandra shine? Uh, let's just give her three planeswalker cards. I love it. Yeah. So it's uncommon Chandra, rare Chandra, and mythic Chandra. We talked about them last week on our yeah. episode. It's kind of like the little bit of a story of her life as she grows up as a pyromancer and advances in her abilities. Yeah. And they talk about how they are, there are other Chandra cards in standard, obviously. Yeah. Like there's Chandra Fire Artisan, which we've seen a lot of in Psy Mono Red. Yeah. Um, Chandra's Outburst, Chandra's Pyrohelix, Chandra's Triumph. So like, could you have maybe a Chandra theme deck in standard? I love theme decks. So you could have a theme deck. You could if have it a happens, Chandra deck. I would love it. Is it, I want it to be competitive, but I, I really love the idea of theme decks yeah. so very much. That's why I love Singleton, I think. One yeah. of the big reasons, because I've got my dinosaur deck. I have my vampire yeah. deck. These things speak to me. I don't really know why, but <laughs> for some reason, just the synergy of having a deck that has a theme is something that I think is super cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then obviously we have a couple of other sh- new Chandra cards in this set, <laughs> like the cutest one. Oh, it's so Chandra's great. Ember cat. Oh, this cat these. is so cute. <laughs> a little meow. It looks, uh, yeah, it's like ready to play or pounce. It wants to play. Yes. But w- w- watch out. It'll burn you. Yes. Just uh, a little two, two for two. Does it have an ability? It has an ability. Um, tap, add red. You can spend it only on elementals or Chandra's. Oh yeah. And the elemental thing is, is the deal Chandra has with yeah. her, with her new planeswalkers. And so does Nissa. Wink, Ooh. wink, girlfriends. <laughs> and as I said, in this green, blue, red elementals are sort oh. of one of the themes okay. of this core set. We see you wizards of the coast. <laughs> and then there's Chandra's regulator, which I think just means it's to keep her from making fire too hot. <laughs> I guess. I mean, if you're a pyromancer, it probably is a worry. Yeah. You know, like what if you burst into flames too often or at that awkward dinner? Oh yeah. no, I'm on fire again. Oh, <laughs> womp womp. Hate when this happens. I was trying to take a cold shower. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this has whenever you activate a loyalty ability of a Chandra Planeswalker, you may pay one. If you do copy that ability, okay. you may choose new targets for the copy. Whoa. Uh, one in tap, discard a mountain card or a red card and draw a card. So this that card seems pretty good. It's it's a rare. Yeah. Um, I actually think this card is insanely strong. I don't know if it's too much win more or whatever, yeah. but it's really good. Like if you're multi- if you're activating a Chandra multiple times, like aren't you just winning? Are you? Aren't you? I don't know. Aren't you? And then. Uh, Cavalier of Flame. This card does it all. Yeah, it does. Slices and mythic. dices. It mythics. It mythics two red, red, red for an elemental knight. It is a six five. Okay. Oh, oh boy. One in a red. Uh, creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and gain haste until end of turn. When it enters the battlefield, discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Okay. When it dies, it deals X damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control, where X is the number of land cards in your graveyard. Wow. Yeah. That really does do it all. Pretty g- 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 pretty g- wild. Do you want your card to do a thing? Guess what? This one this does. This one does a thing. It does a thing. In it fact, does a thing. it does several a things. Yeah. <laughs> it does several a things. Yeah. And Chandra's the name of the game in M20. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks like they want her to be mono red. <laughs> yeah. Play, played in a mono red deck. Do you know what? I was. Do you know what I was thinking? What? I just thought of. So we were talking about Nexus decks. Yeah. Simic Nexus a moment ago. Chandra Awakened Inferno, which is the mythic Chandra. Yeah. Four red it's red. Busted. The plus two is each opponent gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals one damage to you. Yeah. Guess what? If you're just taking a bunch of turns, this will kill you. That's true. Which is kind of wild. Yeah. That is a way to do it. Yeah. And it can't be countered, like you said. So that Chandra like, can't. No. They can't mess with it either. No. Megan, I have a question for you. Go look at these Chandras really quick. Okay. I want to ask you a really important question, do and it's, <sighs> do you want to wear Chandra's outfit? Oh, yes. <laughs> Which Here's the real question. Which of these three Chandra outfits do you want to wear the most? Uh, Number one. I agree. Number Novice one's Pyromancer. really cool. Yeah, it's great. It is great. Oh, gosh. I can't wait for somebody yeah. to cosplay this. Um, this, this looks like someone we know, don't who, you think? Who? Right, you're zooming in on it t- until I get it. <laughs> yeah. This looks like someone we know. I don't know. She kind of looks like she has your hair. Yeah. Uh, my hair 
would be happy if it was like this. <laughs> Maybe this is your next hair, Megan. Maybe it is my next this hair. This is your net Nissa hair. That's true. It's grown out a little bit. Yeah. But it's becoming Chandra hair. It's becoming Chandra hair. Ooh. Okay. They had a kid at me. <laughs> <laughs> what a privilege. Yeah. What an honor. <laughs> So let's talk about some of the uh, preview cards out for M20. Ours is yeah. coming out on Thursday, so watch this space. Oh, do you know what I see in here? What? There's a ley line of sanctity. Yeah, there is. What? Ley line's getting a reprint. It just, I feel like it just got one. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. When I can't remember when it was, but it yeah. did recently get a reprint. So here it is again. Pretty, pretty wild at, at rare. Yeah. All right. So if you need a ley line, they'll uh, probably drop in price. So mm -hmm. here you go. That's Here's a nice. uh, hot one since the last time we talked about them. Yeah. A Johnny strength of the pride. I love an Johnny. Yeah. So now there'll be two legal and standard. This Meow. one is a five loyalty planeswalker for the low, low cost of two white, white. Mm -hmm. uh, plus one, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control, plus the number of planeswalkers you control, uh -huh. which is kind of a new wording, I think, than wording they've used in the past yeah. for that ability. And how are you doing well, that? Well, I don't think that it's ever counted planeswalkers before yeah that's kind of bizarre yeah. um i guess they would have said non-land permanence or something like what well, anyway minus two create a two two white cat soldier creature token named a johnny's pride mate what that's actually a card yeah which says of course whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one counter on it i love it so you just instead of creating boop, boop, anything boop, you create boop, a johnny's pride yeah. mate specifically specifically the card love a johnny's it. pride mate we couldn't do any better we thought about it nope just make a pride mate <laughs> let's, <laughs> and let's move on zero so a zero ability if you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total exile a johnny's strength of the pride and each artifact and creature your opponent controls wow <laughs> great well if you so if you have 35 life yeah you, you, you can just be like well I, well it's not non-land it's not it's not lands no it's they, only they can creatures their lands. Artifacts. exactly it's like a weird sweeper <laughs> ah yeah a johnny comma weird sweeper <laughs> but you know this is cool because you make your cat you can minus yeah. him twice and you can plus and then you grow your cats make your cat grow your cat Make make your cat grow your cat. <laughs> Which is how Get you a raise cat, a grow cat. a cat. <laughs> you raise a cat, you grow a cat. Yeah. Megan, uh, do you like this card? Yes. It's I really, love me a sphinx. It's really cool. It is really cool. I love I love its wings. I love the art on this. It's beautiful. It's great. Adamus all seeing. Yes. Uh, legendary creature Sphinx. It's a four five for three blue, blue, blue. Uh, two and a blue tap, draw two cards, then discard a card. Whenever Artemis all seeing deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least six different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. <laughs> so we found it had two different cards with two uh, unusual win conditions. Wow. I love it. Uh, yeah. I think that's so cool. This is, yeah, this is great. And like impossible Six to ever CMCs. set up. But what? Maybe in limited, but in constructed, you could totally do this. You have to have six. <coughs> How, what if you have two, two of them have the same? I mean, then you don't win. And you need to have six cards in hand. Yeah. I'm Look, just if saying. You, if you're playing blue and you don't have six cards in hand, you're playing it wrong. <laughs> this sounds hard i know somebody will do it and yeah. it'll be super cool it's gonna be great um we have kai car wins fury yeah so this card playing of course right into what you said about about mark rosewater's wedges not Burn talking about his stylish shoes either this is blue red white so that's that's yep. a flying wedge in m20 a three three flyer whenever you are non a cast a non-creature spell create a one one white spirit creature token with flying sacrifice spirit add red to your map Ooh, this is hot this is a good card i like it yeah i think people play this card i also i don't know what's going on in this art but i think i like it i can't tell it's so, too small yeah it looks like a swan having a heartburn that is what it looks like but that can't be right no that can't be right it's so funny sometimes when these cards get previewed i don't correctly see the art until i see it in real life you know or yeah. like blow it up huge. Oh, it's a bird. It's a bird with oh, arms I and it's holding it. fire between those arms. It's because it's, okay. it's because the bird has a body like a human. Yes. It's a bird with a body like a human, but wings like a bird and a head like a bird. Holding a flaming ball. Yes. Holding a flaming sphere. Okay. okay. So that was just not how I saw it. Yeah. Same. It was uh, difficult to see for a second. 
There's a new card that was previewed actually today, if you uh, scroll down a little bit, that um, is a kind of an exciting new black rare, uh, which uh, it could make for some spicy stuff here. Scheming Symmetry, which is a card that this effect, when it happens, is very powerful. A single black mana as well for as a sorcery. Choose tar- two target players. Each of them sacrifices... Sorry, I'm going to start over because that's not what it says at all. (laughs) Choose two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and puts that card on top of it. Do you know what? I looked at this art and I was like, this art is wild and great. Who is it? Obviously, Seb Seb McKinnon. McKinnon. Yeah, this art (laughs) is fantastic. This card is so cool. It's like two weird like Yeah, old style like jesters. Yeah. Um... It's like people, they look kind of like Guy Fox masks, yeah. but then also barristers' wigs. Yeah, I love it. Holding daggers at each other's throats. This art is so good. This is, I'm calling it, this is one, my favorite art for this for Holy M20. Cow. I can call it right now. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. And this card, super powerful. Play it in your two headed giant um, yeah. and win. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, my two target players are me and my partner. <laughs> the uh, end. Me and my the partner. And uh, deal with it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, very cool. Oh, I love this card. Octoprofit. It's a this great is a little name. Common. Yes, one great name. Uh, three, three. When it enters the battlefield, scry two. Love me a scry two. Yeah, hill giant scry two. Mm-hmm. Classic so, corset action right so there. So great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just your bread and butter cards, but also interesting stuff happening with them. As we can see from just these these previews we've already announced. And I think like a lot of people are like, oh, who cares? Core said it's not going to affect anything. I do think cards in here will affect standard. Yeah. Um, just from what we've seen even today. Yeah. Already. I'm excited. Oh, I really. Yeah. I can't believe that we're seeing another set right now. I know. It's kind of wild. Yeah. But I. But yeah. It's here. It's Woo. here. And if you're interested in catching previews and making sure you stay on top of them, you can uh, check out the link in our show notes, which has links to all of the content creators who are previewing cards throughout the preview season. Okay, everybody, now it's time to ask ourselves yeah. a very important question. Is modern broken? Is it? It might be. It might so, be, Megan. Uh, last week, we talked about Hogak Dex. <laughs> and looking at the modern challenge results from yesterday, there were five Hogax. Hogak decks in the top eight. Yeah. Five. Unsurprised. You know, actually, five. I am surprised. I'm surprised it wasn't all 10. <laughs> yeah. Wait, all 10 in the top eight? Uh, all eight in the top. I, I'm I mean, surprised there were 10 Hogak decks in the top eight. <laughs> you're not wrong. That's the kind of overpowering presence that Hogak has. I mean, when Hogak slams down, Hogak slams down. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been playing this deck a little bit. Yes. And how do you feel about how, how good it is? You know, it is... You heard me cackling like a monster earlier. I, I did while you were playing Because I was just it. like, I can't believe that this is happening. <laughs> it was you know, like I had an altar of dementia. Yeah. And I had like gotten some blood ghasts back with the land. I like get the blood ghasts back, use them to cast a hogak. Yeah. Sacrifice them to the altar. Like now I play my land for the turn. Get them back. Sacrifice them. Sacrifice hogak. Play a land. Get them back. It's crack Do it all land. over again. Exactly. It was just like sitting there. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I'm like a dummy playing this deck for the first time. And I, I didn't realize that I could win on that turn, but then I did anyways. Yeah. I mean, it's dumb. You can, oh boy. and the other thing is that it's really hard to fight against because not only can it beat you by slamming your face with zombies and Hogak, yeah. but it can win by milling you. Exactly. It doesn't care. It's just like one thing or another. It's going to yeah. get you. It's going to get you one of those two ways. Yeah, it is. It is it is very good. Is it busted? It might be. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I I, I think that it is. Yeah. There. I made wow. putting my flag in the wow. sand. There you go. The band sand. Maria says it is. I think it's too good. I yeah. actually asked Reed this weekend if it was too good on coverage, and I don't know if he was just trying to be nice, but he said, like, well, I mean, you've got ley line of the void and whatever to be able to deal with it, but... That's true. I mean, you do have to draw it. Yeah. You do have to have it in your opening hand specifically. Opening hand specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw yeah. your opening seven. So, Because um, if you're trying to cast it on turn whatever you could actually cast you're it on already four, dead. you're dead. So Hogak, I mean, I've talked to other people who have played this deck saying consistently, consistently, consistently winning on turn three. Yep. And people do say modern is a turn three format. But is it that turn three, though? I, I kind of disagree with that comment. Yeah. Um, it takes me quite a while sometimes to win with the old Bogley boys. Yeah. Um, I, it's, uh, it seems, it seems very good. It's just, 
absurd. I it's mean, absurd. When you play a free, when you make a free card, this yeah. this can happen. And I think <laughs> yeah, when you when you make a card, and this is what's wild to me about it. Actually, it's like the free part. Yeah, that's good. But the fact that you can cast it from the graveyard. Yeah. I don't understand what people were thinking when they're like, this seems fine. This is going to be fine, you all. It's going to be <laughs> fine. And then it's like, next thing you know, <laughs> because all of like this car, like this deck does function on being able to discard things because you have four faithless looting. Yeah. Um, you have uh, insolent neonates. You want to have cards to discard. And if it's just like your most powerful card, you're a, you can just discard it willy nilly. You don't even care. It's just like, yeah, Faithless Looting, discard Hogak. Don't care. Don't don't need it in my hand. No drawback to that Why action. Why would I? It's literally just as good in my it's just as good in my graveyard. So if I'm gonna ask you the ten million dollar question here about yeah. potential bans of this before we head to Barcelona next month for the Mythic <sighs> Championship, which is modern. Is do we have a do we have a modern Grand Prix between now and then? We do, yes. Okay. So Dallas coming up at the end of this month is modern. Is that too close to the G, to the Mythic Championship? I don't know. This is a hard, like, imagine you're sitting this is a difficult in Watsi's chair. Do you have to do an emergency ban? I don't know. And Dallas, I think what we're going to, this is, this is going to be what the top eight is. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. Right. Yeah. So what are we going to do? My only thought is because like Grand Prix have changed a little bit since, um, like since they haven't been as prioritized by Watsi, to be honest, um, like maybe there's more modern players who are who are just interested in playing like the modern decks that they love well that's for sure so it's like maybe there won't be as many people on this well yeah it's gonna be the pros who are going to spike it or the the grinders or whatever who are gonna bring it so there's still gonna be me there with my foil foiled up boggles exactly in the corner exactly so that might like alter it a little bit but i i agree i feel like we're gonna see I think we're going to see a Hogak heavy top eight. Do you think if you're going to ban something that you ban Hogak, do you ban Altar of Dementia? Do you get rid of Faithless Looting, which has no. been in the conversation for a while now? I don't think you ban Faithless Looting, no. Do you want to take um, the Altar? If you take the Altar away, do you think the deck's still like powerful but okay? I think so. Okay. Yeah, actually, that sounds fine to me. Right. Because like by forcing, by forcing the deck to be like, hey, you're going to have to, you only get this one avenue of attacking with creatures. Yeah. There's enough play in that yeah. that people can deal with it. Yeah, I agree. Because I do feel like part of the problem is its flexibility to be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to attack you to death. Like you gained infinite life while I can mill you. So like, okay. So the other deck that was well represented in this tournament, the Modern Challenge on Magic Online. Yes. Is a Mono Red Phoenix. Yeah. I, oh, watch out. I enjoy this deck. I know. I'm, I can't believe I said it. I'm shocked. But you know, it's pretty cool. Um, you have, again, four Faithless Looting. Yep. Um, you have four Arclight Phoenix, some Bedlam Revelers. I love it. Nice. Yeah. And this is a, a Phoenix deck well, in modern uh, blue-red classic Phoenix colors. Yeah. Was the name of the game for a long time, using Thing in the Ice as yep. the other creature. And so what's the deal here? Why are we only going mono-red? I mean, why bother with the blue? <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm saying wow, that. Wow, you walked right into my trap. I know. I know. <laughs> but like... Look, we've talked about, I've talked about this before about how, why are we giving mono red card draw? Yeah. But the fact is, is that you don't need blue because blue draws cards, which is amazing and perfect and beautiful. (laughs) But like if red is drawing cards on its own, why play the blue? You know, when you have Faithless Looting, that's a single it. red mana, draw two cards. When you have Light Up the Stage, it says single red mana, draw two cards. And I think that was kind of the hinge on this deck that it turned was like, oh, I'm just putting Light Up the Stage in here, right? Yes. Yeah. Of course okay, you are. Here we go. And I'm playing it's this finale absurd. of Promise. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. I played I played this against, I've only played it once so far, but I played it against like a, a Jund deck. Yeah. And I was like, how are you? How are you ever supposed to win against this? This is so dumb. That's what I think whenever anybody plays Jund in Modern. <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> Jund Stop is... Stop trying to play fair magic here. Exactly. Don't bring a knife to this gunfight. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of these two decks, Megan. Yeah. The reason you're familiar with them is you're going to be playing them in an yes. event. Yes. The, the Team Modern Super League is happening today, if you're Woo-hoo. listening to this podcast. Uh, so, yeah. Come check out my team with... <laughs> Which is going to carry me because it is made up of Autumn Burgett and Emma Handy. 
Uh, I am the clear loser of us three. <laughs> whoa, whoa. This is not a beating yourself down podcast. No, it's true. It's true. But I mean, like, yeah. let's just look at that team. Let's just, I am severely outclassed worthy. by my we're teammates. Not worthy. And I can be very honest about that <laughs> <laughs> with myself. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. Cool. Yeah. So how can people watch? Um, by by tuning into the Team Modern Super League on Twitch tomorrow, which is going to be on Magic's channel, I okay, believe. Okay, cool. What time yeah. do you know? At, 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 at night. Exactly. In I the evening. Early evening. I want to oh, say, you know, okay. it's, I want to say it starts at like 5 Eastern. Okay, cool. 7 Central. So get off work. Check out the Team Modern Super yeah. League. Yeah. Are you going to be uh, doing commentary as well? Yeah, of course. Okay, sweet. It's going to be a party. Yeah, and watching these, uh, who are you playing against? I, uh, I Let me see if yeah, I... Yeah, look it up. Look I want to know who you're going to be Look taking down. Up. <laughs> Look it up. Take it down. That's that's going to be my mantra. Mantra? Mantra? Oh, my god. Mantra. Gosh. You just said mantra. I can't believe I said mantra. It's like manta uh, ray. <laughs> mantra ray. Mantra ray. Oh, I don't. We're playing against the brew crew. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. So who knows what they're going to bring? Uh, that's So this is definitely going to be a show to watch. Ooh, yeah, the brew crew always brings fun they decks. They bring some wild decks. So let's see what's going to happen. All right. This is appointment television, everybody. Oh, yeah. Team Modern Super League tomorrow night. Twitch.tv slash magic. Must watch TV. Remember must see TV? Just like Love Circle. <laughs> yeah, Love Circle is definitely on must see TV. Must see TV. <laughs>
You've heard of a pig catcher or a chimney sweep. But what about the pig, pig sweep? sweep? Think about Anyways, it. Anyways, that's been our show. Thanks once again to everyone who is supporting uh, us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. It does mean so, so much to us. As well as to our sponsors, Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro. Both fantastic vendors of fantastic stuff. Absolutely. See you back here next week after all the action in Vegas and Seattle. Yeah. We're going to roll in here and we're going to continue. It's like high tide. <laughs> like, a fl- like a fleet of pigs. Boats. Oh, pigs. I said pigs. You did. Why though? Like a fleet of pigs. <laughs> Come on.